This is the third video on first order modelling. The focus of this video is on resistor capacitor systems. We're going to build on the previous video which looked at spring dampers or spring dampers in parallel. And first of all we'll introduce the component a capacitor and then look at what happens when you arrange resistors and capacitors in series. We'll show that this gives analogies with parallel arrangements of spring and dampers. First then, what is a capacitor? Well, a capacitor is a storage device, and in particular, it stores charge. So when current flows, current is the rate of flow of charge per second, or coulombs per second, and the capacitor stores this flow. Um, so it could either be an increasing store or a decreasing store, depending on the direction of flow. If you want to look and see how a capacitor is um, drawn in an electrical diagram, there's the picture there in the bottom left. You see you use these two parallel lines. We have a current I coming into the capacitor, a voltage V across the capacitor, and you'll see C is the letter usually used to denote a capacitor. So what are the equations for this component? Well, first of all, the charge stored Q is this um, parameter C times the voltage across the capacitor. So Q equals CV. That's the most common model you will see for a capacitor. However, you will remember that we have said sometimes people prefer to work in current rather than in charge. It's a more generic term. So there is a relationship between current and charge. I'll just write it here. I equals dQ dt. So I can go from charge to current by differentiating with respect to time. So if you look at this second block here, I equals C dV dt, that's simply representing the capacitor using current rather than using charge. And you'll see we get this derivative of voltage across the capacitor with respect to time. And just to remind you at the bottom, you can get back to charge by doing the integral of I dt. Now, one alternative that you may come across, because it puts the voltage on its own and the Q on the other side, is this term here, V equals 1 over CQ. And that's interesting because most parameters come as the input equals some constant times the output, whereas here the parameter C comes in the denominator. Resistors capacitors in series then. So what happens if we have this form of loop? You'll see we have a resistor R1 and a capacitor C. Now, the first thing you should do before you tackle these problems is make sure you annotate the diagram. So I'm going to put there's a voltage V1 across the resistor and a voltage V2 across the capacitor. And the next thing I'm going to do is remind people that we're going to use Kirchhoff's, so I've spelled that wrong, Kirchhoff's voltage law. And what does Kirchhoff's voltage law say? It says you add up the voltages around the loop and make sure that they balance the voltages, uh, that the applied voltage, which here is V. So let's see what we get. First of all, what's the voltage across the resistor? Well, we've got V1 equals I R1, or if you want to write I in terms of charge, you're going to get R1 dQ dt. What's the voltage across the capacitor? There it is, V2 equals 1 over C times Q. And then Kirchhoff's voltage law tells me I get V equals V1 plus V2. So if I put all this together, I get V equals R1 dQ dt plus Q over C. So what do you notice? It's a simple first order ordinary differential equation. Look at some analogies then. You'll see that we've drawn here, down here's the um, spring damper, and over here's the resistor capacitor. So the spring damper in parallel, the resistor capacitor in series. And what we're interested in is, are there some analogies between these two systems? So first of all, let's look at what components we've got. A capacitor stores energy as star charge, so it's a storage device. Whereas a resistor dissipates energy as heat. So when a current flows through a resistor, it dissipates energy. Um, you'll see most heaters comprise primarily resistors. What about the, res the uh, 
a spring damper system. Well, a spring is also a storage device. It stores energy when it's displaced, whereas a damper dissipates energy as heat when there's a velocity going through it. So what do you notice? You notice that both the spring and the capacitor are storage devices, whereas both the resistor and the damper dissipate energy when there's current flow or velocity, something moving with respect to time. So those components seem to have analogous behaviours in terms of what they do. Next, let's look at the laws that we've applied. Well, when we did Kirchhoff's voltage law, we wrote, I'll put it right at the bottom here, V equals V1 plus V2. Whereas for the mechanical system, we did force balance, we wrote F equals F1 plus F2. So you'll see they're analogous types of expressions. The force is distributed between the two components, or the voltage is distributed between the two components. We've got components with analogous behaviours, one a storage device and one um, a device for dissipating energy. So unsurprisingly, the models we end up with are analogous. We get a first order differential equation in both. If you look at the positions, you see the damper multiplies the derivative, the resistor multiplies the derivative. The damper and the resistor have analogous behaviours and appear in analogous positions in the equation. The spring and the capacitor are storage devices and what do you notice? The spring constant comes here in the equation, the capacitor comes here in the equation in the same place. And obviously the input, either the force or the voltage, also comes in the same place. So in summary, we've got analogous components, models and behaviours. If you understand how a spring damper works, you understand how a resistor capacitor works and vice versa. So a summary, the sort of analogies you'll get to know. Voltage is analogous with force. Displacement is analogous with charge. So the displacement of the spring, for instance the extension X, is analogous to having a charge on a capacitor. A damper is analogous with a resistor. Both resist motion, either the current or the velocity, and dissipate heat when there is motion. Spring and a capacitor, they both store something to do with the flow. So the spring stores displacement and turns that into energy. Capacitor stores charge, turns it into energy. Current is analogous with velocity. Current is charge per second, velocity meters per second. And key one here, the parallel arrangement in the mechanical systems is analogous with the series arrangement in the electrical systems. And that's because when you have parallel and mechanical, the force is add to give you the total force. The forces between each component add to give the total force. Whereas when you have series electrical, the voltage across each component add to give the total voltage in the loop. So in summary, you've got, you end up with the same underlying dynamic model. That is a first order ODE, whether you have a mass damper, sorry, mass damper, a spring damper, or a resistor capacitor. Now for completeness, we're going to just briefly have a look at what happens if you have a parallel arrangement of resistor and a capacitor. So I'm just going to mark in some of the uh, things here. We've got a current I1 going through the resistor, a current I2 going through the capacitor. Now because this is a parallel arrangement, we must have the same voltage V across the resistor and the capacitor as the applied voltage. What I can do now is look at each component in turn and because these got parallel arrangements, I'm going to need Kirchhoff's current law um, by summing the currents at a node. This is what we get then. The voltage across the resistor, I1 times R1. The voltage across the capacitor, and you'll see I've used the derivative form here, dV dt equals I2 over C. And finally, Kirchhoff's current law, I equals I1 plus I2. So if I put all this together, I'm going to end up with I equals V over R1 plus C dV dt. And again, you'll see that this is non-simple compared to the sort of models we had before, because here voltage is the input, uh, not current. And we're not going to um, consider these types of systems any further. So a summary. We've illustrated that the model derivation for a simple series arrangement of a resistor and a capacitor gives you this nice 
first order ODE voltage equals resistance times TQDT, rate of change of charge with time, plus Q over C, where Q is the charge stored in the capacitor. The behaviour in the model is analogous to a simple parallel spring damper system.